All right, so today we're going to get started working on another dead MacBook. It's an 8200281 board, and it appears to be dead. We're going to plug it in and see what my USB-C amp meter says. USB-C amp meter says that this MacBook is taking 0 0.03 to 0 0.06 amps, going back and forth. We're going to check out our power rails and see if there's any power rails that are missing. <laughs> I feel like a MacBook. I feel like a MacBook today. Oh, I look like shit too. Look at this hair. What the fuck is this? Being Italian sucks sometimes. Your hair does the silliest things. Like, what is this? Who made that? Not me. All right. So the first rail that we need to check for here on the schematic is PP bus G3 hot. Now, I most likely have PP3V3 underscore G3 hot because that rail is required to get 20 volts on the, on the charger. The charger is at 20 volts, which means that it's able to communicate with the CD3215 chip, which is going to control USB-C charging. And that chip is powered by PP3V3 underscore G3 hot. So that's why we're not going straight to the other G3 hot rails like PP3V3 underscore G3 hot, because I know that that has to be there since I'm getting 20 volts in the charger. We're going to check for our PP bus. And PP bus G3 hot is something I can find right down here. So let's see where that is on this board, and I'm going to punish you by putting my face at the bottom of the microscope camera. Yep. So, we are looking for the PP bus G3 hot, and the PP bus is going to be right here. We're going to put this on the screen using Paul Daniels' amazing software and see what we get on this PP bus G3 hot. Let's see if Paul Daniels' software will turn on and work. Look, it worked. I love when that happens. So, we measure, and PP bus is zero volts. All right, so now before we check for a short to ground, which is one of the things you should do if a power rail is missing. And if you're unsure what you should do when a power rail is missing, you can check in the description below. There's going to be a guide. It's a nice little PowerPoint presentation on how to get started with component level board repair on MacBooks. One of the first things that I'm going to do is check and see if there's a short to ground. I'm going to put the multimeter into ohms mode. And let's see over here what our resistance is to ground. 3.5 ohms. That clearly indicates that there's a short circuit. So now we have two things that we can do. We can look around the board, or we can inject voltage into the board and try to see what section gets hot on a thermal imaging camera. I don't feel good. And getting a thermal imaging camera would require turning around, looking down, picking something up, hooking it up, running the software, changing the scene in open broadcaster, and I, I want to sneeze and kind of throw up just even thinking about doing all that work, much less actually doing it. So what we're going to do on this board since I'm sick, is we're just going to look around the board with the microscope and pray that we can find the short circuit on our PP bus G3 hot. So, let's go for it. All right, so you all tell me when it is that you see something that looks like it's potentially short-circuited. Can't wait to get the better computer set up so that I'll be able to stream in far better quality than before using the Threadripper. Oh, I can't wait to get my Threadripper. That's going to be so awesome. G Whoa. 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 Now what's that capacitor for? Well, there's one way to find out. Let's load up our schematic and board view software. And that is the capacitor. 
on PP bus HS C GPU. But what is PP bus HS GPU? What does it mean? Where does that come from? Hmm, that comes from R5990. What's R5990? R5990 appears to be a current sensing resistor where PPBus G3 hot comes in and PPBus HS GPU comes out. This allows you to tell how much current it's using. There's going to be a teeny tiny voltage drop across this resistor. This chip over here is going to measure that voltage drop by measuring the beginning and the end of the resistor, and it's going to tell how much amperage this is using, everything after PPBus HS GPU is using, by telling the voltage difference between the two. That's going to act as a current sense resistor. Now, that is indeed on our PPBus G3 hot line. So we're going to remove that cap and pray that once I remove that cap, everything just works again, easily. Like all the boards that I pick at random. Paul, are you watching? Random, random, random. Are you watching, Paul? <clears throat> Do note that this board has no liquid damage, no signs of a drop damage. It just decided to die because it's a MacBook. random. What Threadripper are you planning on getting? I got the 2950X. Damn, that's one cracked looking capacitor. How much does it cost to ship a MacBook to you from your urban back? I don't know. You may want to check with your local FedEx or Postal Service. I'm a terrible postage calculator. I'm a pretty good board repair technician, but unfortunately a terrible postage calculator. All right. Keep this onto the board. It's a beautiful, beautiful capacitor in this filthy, dirty MacBook. <laughs> Next, we plug this in, and the MacBook will turn on. As can be seen here, ahem, here we go. This MacBook is taking 1.6 amps, which means this MacBook is turning on. Look at that. Beautiful. Oh, I know. You, you want to see a picture on the screen, don't you? You won't just trust me when I say that it works. I thought we built up trust, you and I, between all this time. Show me a picture on that screen. Ahem. There we go. Apple logo. Aha. It works. This touch bar MacBook that was picked at random has been fixed in under 10 minutes.
That's how we find a short circuit. That's how we find a short circuit and remove it. Just that simple, folks.